So good morning, January the 14th, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Light. Today is day number two in the first week of class, so let's get started. So good morning, welcome back to this class. Today is the second class of the semester. We went through the first class on Monday. It looks like it's, yes, I'm speaking into the microphone. So I promise, today you can see a little bit more of what we're going to do. So I told you week number one, which is starting from January the 11th to January the 16th, so from Monday to Saturday. And so what I'm trying to get you used to is this new Moodle environment. It's very important for all of you to manage your learning, for me to take a good look at what you're doing. It's not just a site where you can download the notes. Uh, normally, you can get everything here. Um, it is suggested you buy the textbook, but even though you don't buy it, you can get almost all the things here on this website. Well, uh, where are we as of last time? Okay, so let, let me backtrack a little bit. So we start the course by helping you to understand what is meant by gender education, and on the first day of class, I showed you a little bit of the differences between what is supposed to be a general education course and a major course. And at this point, I expect that you know some differences. So let me reinstate my positions here. Uh, I'm the instructor of this course, but I call myself the coach, a facilitator for the learning. And my mission in this course, which is going to, we're going to spend about three months here, is to help you to transition yourself from being a talk to learn student to a learn to learn student. And so my question to you, as of last time, I hope you can put some thinking into what is meant by a talk to learn student and what is meant by a learn to learn student. And so I invite you to spend two minutes time in class as of last time to think about your high school experience and then I also did give you each one of your ideas, one minute time to share with us your high school experience. And then, as I said, I would like to connect what you share to what we're going to do in this course. And um, today I'm going to uh, give you a little bit more. Okay, where were we as of last time? We stopped when the time is up at looking into the course syllabus. So let me bring you back to the course syllabus by clicking on this link, okay? Now, um, basically, there are five different sections in this course syllabus. The first one is called the course outline. That is where we were as of last time on Monday. So we went through the catalog descriptions of this course. Well, a lot of things to observe here. Uh, but I do not want to bother you with all those wording, but except for the fact that this is a course not just about technology. Okay, you're going to learn how to use a lot of things from a user's point of view, not from a designer's point of view, because that is not what this course is all about. But another very important thing, uh, besides learning how to use the technology, that's the name of this course is all about, is so called Web Technology and Life. It is a course in which you're going to make a lot of sense of what you are using every day in the area of technology. Well, we say web technology is just a leading term, but actually when we talk about technology, it's more than just the web technologies today. Almost all of you have something like this. This is mobile technology combined with web technologies. And when I'm speaking with this microphone, the microphone itself is a technology. So, Today, I'm going to give you a question to start with. What is meant by a technology? Have you ever thought about what is meant by a technology? Now, think about it using, you're going to spend two minutes to think about it again and one minute to share. But now, now just keep that question in mind. All right. So the second thing I would like to make sure you know that we do have a textbook, but uh, it's really up to each one of you to design, you like to buy it, and if you want to buy it, you can always buy it through Amazon. Okay, you do not need to buy it through the local bookstore because it's prices. 
oh, sometimes it's not good enough. Well, the, the book that I recommend, if you really want to know something about web technology, is this one, released in 2012. The author is Kodo, and the name of this is Introductions to Web 2.0. All right? So uh, we actually in the middle of a lot of changes in technologies, including the web technology. Some people will say, now we're in the era of web 3.0. And some people will say, not just 3.0, we're actually in the era of semantic web. That means it's a web which could think, could help us to think along with it. Right? It's very interesting. So that is one book that I highly recommend. It's not just a book itself containing a lot of hand-ons guiding you through a lot of things you need to learn if you want to pick up some skills there. Okay, then after that we have a number of other textbooks, or better say reference book for you. If you want to take a good look at it, you can go to the library, look it up. I believe I've read all of all those books and it's they are there in the library uh, for more than five years ago. Sometimes this is 207, 209. So here we are. Uh, these are the traditional course resources that you have to keep in mind. Then, as I shared with you as last time, if you actually register for this course, you need to get yourself prepared for number one, ah, group based project work. You don't study alone in this course, you have to study with a partner and even with a team of partners. So some experience in group-based project work you're going to make too with this course and so much better if you already got that experience. The second thing is we're going to use a learning management system which is provided by the University of Macau, which you saw minutes ago, that's called the Buddha environment. And the University of Macau is called the UN Buddha. UN means University of Macau, and you have to use this platform a lot. Remember last time I invite you to make sure you visit this platform at least two times a day, morning and evening. And I say it's much better if you can drop by it in, during the afternoon and having lunch. Uh, it's very important. Okay, it's very important. I use that to help uh, bridge the gap of communication in passing. Sometimes we really cannot see one another after the class of the week, which is about three hours. Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Ask me. Okay, you can ask me about question to this environment. Then, as I said, today I'm going to make sure you understand uh, the three important course learning objectives in this course. Three, only three, all right? Not more than three. So, you are going to um, guide it through the process of coming to classes, so it's very important. And here I'm going to help you to become literate, I mean, someone who knows something about something in the area of latest web technologies. And I would also like to make sure you understand the impact of such technologies in our daily living. Impact of such technologies in our daily living. Sometimes I will put forward some ideas, or a typical light example, and I will invite you to think, I'll wait not more than two minutes and then you have to respond in one minute, and we don't just do it alone. We have to do it in pairs a lot of time and also in groups. And indeed, next week, starting from next week, uh, we have to say goodbye to this classroom. We're going to another classroom, you better say another learning space. And then where you can see a little bit of different environment, you can make it so much easier for you to talk. All right? So the first thing is I'm going to be a teacher. So I'm going to tell you something about the latest web technologies, and I'm going to introduce to you the potential impact of those technologies. And not only it's a one path process, I'm talking and you must have, so you can probably go with that. The second thing is I would like to encourage you to formulate and think about this in your mind and try to express, to internalize some concept and externalize it, um, so formulate Put it in order, in, 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 inside of your brain matter, your brain, your thinking, and express your views on the design of web tools. Design, you do not need to be a technical expert to express your ideas on the design. You know that when you pick a device like that, is it good to use or not because of your practical usage experience. From the user point of view, we call it user experience. And so I would invite you to put some thinking into. Uh, 
by your personal preference of what it's supposed to be like to have a tool which can use to help you do something, right? And express your ideas on that possible design too. And then we're going to talk about this through case studies and specific case of products. You can always pick up one. If you visit the CTM booth, they always have some new products coming up. And if you're very sure, you read it, and if you go to the original technology, where you can buy a lot of the Apple products, and they could, uh, through the Facebook, you can see a lot of this kind of introductions. So, once you read something like this, I would like you to look at some of those expressions of what they feel about this. So, for the review work and written work, both from your own experience or from anybody's experience, it's not difficult to understand this. If you have ever got this experience of buying books online, for example, from Amazon, you can read a lot of the books review by people who bought this book or who read this book, and they tell you is it good, is it bad, and if there are five star there, you can see that if there's only one star, but that is not good, but the four star, the five star, or is consistently by a number of people, you know that you have some confidence, so you can see the, the power of written work. All presentation means you have a lot of chance to talk, to share, and uh, indeed I'm going to tell you something that you can earn your score, a pretty large sum of your semester score through, along the oral presentations, and give you a chance almost in every class. And then, classroom discussions. With some telling people what you think, you have to engage your fellow classmate to express the views on what you said, and engage them in classroom discussions. So these are part of the activities we're going to do in this class, and also something I expect to see happening. In other words, I'm the facilitator of this classroom, but the owner of this classroom, the owners of this classroom are all of you, all right? So I'm a servant teacher. So lastly, the third learning objective is to make sure that after going through those activities, um, picking up product, looking into the technology, examining the impact of that technology in our living, uh, we could, in some sense, raise our own awareness of such technologies, the impact of such technologies in our daily living. What is meant by awareness? Awareness is more than understanding. Awareness is the term that you know, not just the surface meaning of something. You have experiences, um, contact with that, for example. If I ever use the Samsung uh, mobile phone, I know how good it is. But if I have never tried iPhone before, I can never tell you how to compare this with an iPhone, right? So awareness is more than just telling you the facts. It's a personal experience, okay, which could when you share that. It should have some impact uh, to other people because they could pick up from what you share some useful and useful experience, all right? So it's very important that you know that oh, it's part of knowledge, it's right? So the widespread focus on the web influence in various sectors in modern living, today you can see that. What if we do not have the web today? You will not be able to use Facebook when you go home. You will not be able to take a picture of what you eat and send it to your friends. Uh, you will get used to the kind of uh, days that before the emergence of computers. So it's very interesting about this. Now, I would like to introduce to you a really practical discourses. Practical discourses means you know how to conduct a discussion with people, not just the kind of casual conversations that you do it over lunch or whatever it is. Practical means it's something you can share after thinking through it. Discourse means it's more than just casual conversations, but the use of the web tools for purposeful human activities or endeavors, purposeful human endeavors. What is meant by purposeful human endeavors? You're here to learn, so you come to the classroom to pick up knowledge of this particular course. The purpose of coming to the class is to pick up knowledge, to learn something. And in order to learn that something, you need to make sure your ears are ready, your eyes are ready, your thinking is ready. You can integrate the new things here into the old knowledge framework you have. So, purpose for human endeavors, it's very meaningful. All right, 
Having said that, I hope you can keep in mind those three important course learning objectives. And then the topics we're going to cover. Well, I think that we give you some suggestions. The number of hours is just the estimate figures, okay? Long way, we need to make sure that how much time we're going to devote to a specific topic. And in order to do that, we need to budget our time into the semesters, not enough more than 14 weeks. And for each week, not enough more than three hours. So we have to consider if we're going to have anything happen in the classroom, how many hours we're going to devote to a specific topic. But in reality, we to learn something. When you do the group, when you um, process some knowledge beyond the classroom hours, you can ignore those factors. It's your individual things, all right? All right, so let's take a look at that. As I shared with you last time, we have four common modules for those G courses under the uh, specific category of IT and Knowledge Society. And the four common modules are Introductions to IT and Knowledge Society. The second one is Ethics and Social Responsibility in the Information Age. You don't need to worry about the meaning of that. We will come to that. The third is the digital divide in the 21st century, and the fourth is information literacy and competency. All these are we call the core topics. It forms uh, the core layers of the courses offering the IT and knowledge society. And then we'll come to seven essential topics for web technology. The blogs, the wikis, the photo sharings, all those are not new stuff. I think you know that uh, the developers is somewhere where you're using your web. Our Z podcast in social book marketing, I explained a little bit about this last time. Mash up the mixture of different things and to create something new. Virtual office applications, uh, tagging means categorizing and labeling. For some of it is another name for um, what we call the uh, ontology. Ontology means the categories of something, the art of doing categories of something. The social web, you know, it because your experience on Facebook. The social networking is the actions of doing it through the web. And that's why we have the social web, the e-business model, like the Amazon's, the eBay, the Taobao, the e-government that you can experience a lot in Macau, Hong Kong, and even inside China. E-learning is what we're doing also, because through the learning management system at Google Environment, you can do a lot so you can see that this is the key things. We're using this as an important platform to do a lot of these. And of course, finally, putting things into perspective. And so these are the topics we are interested in. All right. This is not a class where we have laboratory, so you're not uh, attending this course through a lab based model. Okay, so we do not have any particular lab or tutorial, we just have a classroom. Uh, but as I said, I'm going to bring you to a different type of learning space starting from the next Monday, which I'm going to announce to you um, at the end of this class and also through teacher's message for week number two. Uh, I'll give you the locations of the venue. And so if you look at the study effort expected in class, lectures, hours, total together is 42 hours. We do not have any tutorials, zero hours. Hands-on experience, zero hours. All of we will uh, get our midterm done in a computer lab where we do not need any special skills except for using the computer. I think to do this is not a big problem. And self-study expected 20 hours. Homework assignment, 14 hours. Project and case study 14 hours all together. When you come to class, when you do something at home, you can expect that 90 hours is the maximum amount of time you're going to spend in this course. Now, as I said, 90 hours is the maximum amount of time. Whether or not you can really get it done within 90 hours is a challenge. And so, as I said, my mission in this course is to help you the transitions from being a talk to learn student to learn to learn student. And I tell you this, I give you 90 hours altogether to start with. And whatever time you spend doing something in this course, you need to start deducting from those 90 hours. And to see if you can make it work to finish this course with your frying colors with the 90 hours. Now that is your challenge. Okay, keep that in mind. That is your challenge, keep that in mind. Don't spend too much time in one course because you're doing several courses together. 
So assessment for student learning in this course, take a look at that. We have three major assignments, and we call this assignment a learning contract. It's a big term. It's a very meaningful term. It's something, it's a contract. You sign it with me on what you're going to learn in each contract. And so um, the compositions of each con contract includes individual work, pair work, and teamwork. And in the first, um, I think, assignment, in the first learning contract, we do not have any teamwork, it is an individual work and pair work. And for each learning contract, we're going to allocate 10 semester points there. So for the free learning contracts, you are going to earn altogether 30 semester points out of 100, okay? So this is so much that is allocated to the assignment. And then you have one project towards the end of the semester, normally four weeks, and we call this project as a portfolio project. You need to create a learning project of what you did in this course. Uh, it's a very meaningful project. It's directly connected to each of the three learning contracts you did, uh, you're going to do in the semester. So it's something like you do something in the beginning, in the middle, and in the last part of the semester, and then you do a project to wrap them up and put them in a very important context. It's your portfolio where you can showcase your work or achievement. Uh, that is an individual part. So it's going to give you 20 semester points. So when you add your project and you're learning assignments together, you have 50 semester points, all right? And then we have something very interesting called a learn-to-learn -learn activity. Now the learn-to-learn -learn activity is a kind of activity to ensure that you don't do things at the very last minute. You do things on a continuous basis studying from the first day of the semester through the last day of the semester. The learn-to-learn activities include, you need to do some reading, okay, I give you a reading list each week. You need to do some online activity to keep track of your reading, or if you want me to put it more concisely, it's something called note-taking of what you read, okay? It's basically, it's expected to do reading each week, and you have to take notes of what you read each week. And we call this, <laughs> in a professional sense, daily journal or weekly journal, all right? And then after you got something from your reading, it is highly recommended that you have to engage in the discussions with your learning partner. You need to identify your learning partner in this course. And you need to ask the help from your learning partner to give you feedback on what you read, what you wrote. Surgeon. And at the same time, you need to help your learning partner do something similar. So that is part of learn to learn activity. But besides this, there is always a process to produce something towards the end, we call it the product of your work. And so um, we're going to master the learn to learn activity in terms of the journals you produce, in terms of the products of the journaling which is called rock. You need to write a rock of the learning activity uh, on the specific items, on the specific topic, based on the number of topic we mentioned. Uh, since we have 14 weeks, uh, your learn to learn activity is counted mainly from week number one to week number 10. So the first 10 weeks is very important. All right? So it, it also helps you develop the habit of learning and also the habit of mind keep things in order. You always have to do things throughout a period of time, not at the very last minute. Again, if you look at that, we do have any final examples I told you, all right? The second important item, uh, beside the learn to learn activity, is called the in-class participations, all right? What that means is you will be given a chance, but you have to sign up to come here Pick up the microphone, talk to the whole class about what you did, what you prepared as a class week. And you will have five minutes time each time to share and record this in class sharing. And each student is expected to do in class sharing because if you look at in class parents' sharing score, it's 20 semester point. Okay, how do you get this 20 semester point? Normally, 
I expect each student, if you engage yourself in in class sharing, starting from the second grade of this semester, that is next week, and if you do at least ten times in class sharing from next week to week number 11, 12, 13, even 14 to the end of the semester, 10 times, it's not difficult. And for each time you share about what you did in the, in the week before, you're actually informing the whole class, you're keeping up with the schedules of learning, which is based on the learn to learn activity, and then you rip the score with the five minutes sharing each time that you sign. So if you got 10 times in class sharing, I will give you two semester points per sharing, and you will get 20% strength. All right? How do I know that you did share? We have the camera. We have the video produced. And if you go to YouTube today, you can see the video of my class on Monday. So your record in class sharing will always be traced to the video. All right? So, and then you have to make sure, at the end of each sharing, you keep a record of what you share in the following of the Moodle web Okay? So you have your record, you have the video, you know what you share is based on your reading and your journals. And that is how we encourage you to do it. But I will not force you to do it, all right? Not only my student will become one to do this towards the end of the semester when they know it's the 20th semester point. They do not want to miss. All right? So it's something that is a self-initiative. Of course, if you don't do it, you will lose 20 points straight. That is not working. All right? That's not working. And then we have a midterm exam, which is not only scheduled after the collections of the three learning contracts. Um, at the beginning of the learning portfolio, and which it's decided um, around the activity you have been doing, reading, uh, journaling, discussions online, and writing a blog, something like this. So it's that said, discussion question. And the midterm exam will give you 15 percent, 15 semester points, so when you add them together, it's 100 semester points. Okay, we do not have any. Uh, to be exact, summative exercise. Now, in tests, quiz, I don't like this. Okay, not even the final exam. So, the use of method of earning a grade that you've been so much accustomed to in high school, writing tests, writing grades, final exam, a lot applicable here. You have to learn how to learn by doing something on time. Develop the habit of thinking, uh, express yourself uh, based on the topics that we introduced to you in each class on web technology and life. All right, I've just given you a very important piece of information about how you're going to earn your grade here. All right, so having said that, I think it's pretty good. Then we can say that um, I bring you to take a look at the schedule of the topics. Now, on each week, we expect that you will understand what to choose to study for that week. And why do we say something like this? Because normally in a major course, it's the instructor who's doing the structure and learning content, the lecture in each class, and you're supposed to master the learning content lectured by the instructor. But in this course, as I said in the very first class, it's meant to help to learn to learn. When you are going to learn to learn, you must have choices. Okay? So what I did is I set an environment with a lot of resources, more than you can learn in one week. And so you are invited to choose just one topic each week from the reading list, based on the guidelines here, and then do a little bit deeper study on that topic. For example, getting understanding of the basics by taking some notes, searching on the web to see if the issue has been discussed by people, and you pick up the ideas, and then doing some personal PowerPoint on connecting those pieces together, 
And towards the end of that, we come up with your first note, ideas of how to make sense of that. So, in the first way, we say that uh, we have to understand a little bit on the philosophy of this course. And in particular, you're going to learn the meaning of IBL, inquiry-based learning, that it's based on questioning into something. How do you question into something? Now, since each one of you have a choice to choose a specific topic, each one of you need to exercise the brain to question in the topic that you choose. And then, towards the end of the week, you must have some products, we call it, learning that you can acquire from your questioning activity. So, IBL process guides you through what is meant by questioning into something. How do we get started? And what is expected behind questioning? And how do you justify what you share is based on concrete evidence of what you discover? It's very important. It's just like doing research, right? The second idea, which you can see, is the SRL concept. SRL means self-regulated learning, well, which is basically a layer on top of inquiry-based learning. Self-regulated learning requires each one of us to set goals in our learning. Before we do anything, we need to understand what we are doing this for to make sure that you are not being confused of why you are doing something. And then the second important aspect of SRL is once you know your goals behind doing something, you need to be aware of the resources you have to get it done. And one of the important resources how much time you have. You cannot do 100% of the work if that 100% of the work required to do years of practice when you actually have two days or one week. So you need to understand the timeline to match with your learning goals to be accomplished. But once you know your learning goals, and once you also be aware of your timeline, you need to understand what you need to do in order to get it done within a time limit. What do we need? We need action plan. We need a plan of actions. We need to think about strategies to execute some actions. For example, looking up information on the library, the web concerning a specific topic. When there are tons of information, how can I select the appropriate amount of information to satisfy our learning? goals. So you also have to understand the process of evaluating the information. All right? And all those information, literacy, competency, skill, you have to apply to it. Well, of course, at the end of that, if you're just doing it alone, you're always doing it as one person. You have the experience of doing things together with your learning partner, which is a peer work, and also with another peer, which is inter-pair work as a team. So problem-based learning means it's group-based project work where you have identified a clear problem to tackle. All right? So not only the problem, it's some meaningful problem. So we call it PBL. PBL is not only associated with the teamwork. All right? And you need to understand that uh, the two important things one is many hands makes things easy. Also, many hands spoil the work. So how are you going to walk between these two extremes as an individual in your team to make sure you can solve the problem? So in this course, we're going to introduce to you IBL in the first learning contract, SRL in the second learning contract, and PBL in the third learning contract before you come back to take a good look at what you accomplish in a free assignment and get things into your learning portfolio. So in the second, third, and fourth week, we're going to introduce to you the four essential modules, all right? And then starting with the fifth week, six and seven, we're going to help you understand a number of topics here. And then 8, 9, 10, 
the remaining topics. And after that, we have four weeks left. For the four weeks, you're going to focus on your learning portfolio, and then final exam review, since we do have any final exam, normally it's what we call a course review, a summary, all right? So uh, it's important that you look at these brief schedule that there's some activity you're expected to perform called coursework. First of all, it's called the online learning journal, it's just note taking. I will give you an electronic notebook to do that. And then you will have to conduct discussion forum, okay? To discuss with the learning partner, and then discuss with your team partners. And then you have to collaborate with your learning partner and team partner in the context of wiki to do things together on the web uh, to accomplish a particular uh, project, like writing a report. And writing is a very essential part in this course. Thinking is very important. And speaking in class is also very important. This will help you to sharpen your skills, academic skills, essentials for your subsequent courses of study in your college education. That's why I say this is a good important course. All right, having said this, let's get back here. I think it's time for me to give you some refreshment, all right? Uh, I want to praise you uh, and let you enjoy the theme songs that I choose for this course, but unfortunately, if you do not know Cantonese or Mandarin, uh, I need someone to help, okay? So I want you to listen to this song and meditate a little bit about what I said so far, including last class, and what you're going to do in this course starting from today. All right? So this is the theme song.
I still remember the days when I was a student in secondary school, in college, and normally we got confused about things we are doing. Well, it's okay. Um, it's natural that we got confused. But you have to set goals in your studies. And in this particular course, the purpose is, I hope that I could help you transition yourself from being a top to learn student Meaning, goals are often set by your instructor to learn to learn student when you can set your own goals. Okay? When you know what you're supposed to achieve, you should have some initiative to get it done for your own good shape. Okay? So that is the theme song. And I hope you've already studied the GE handbook. And I hope you really can take a look at the calendar. And so let's begin today's class. Let's take a look at the world.
Okay, you've seen the work now. What are we going to do? The first important thing is when we looked at this week, the thing is inquiry-based learning, IBL, and I've just introduced to you what IBL is all about. It's about questioning into something. All right, so the first skill that I would like to help to learn in the first learning contract studying this week is some basics on inquiry-based learning. And the first thing that is important in inquiry-based learning, it's after you have seen something, you have to learn to ask questions, okay? You have to learn how to ask questions. But learning how to ask questions is not easy. It's easier said than done. So I would like to translate this into some steps for you to follow. Let me offer you a three important letter. Um, fit, or is it, is it fit? Yeah. The first letter is O. O represent observations. So you observe something with your eyes, with your hearing, ears, and sometimes you observe something by tasting it or something. All right, so minutes ago, I sold you the, meet the few songs of this course. The idea is to give you some understanding of what you need to get yourself prepared mentally for this course. And the second thing is, I brought you to look at the world from a lecturer scientist part of the world, where you can see something. And so, we can look at the specific topic we're going to talk about today, or this week. It's called Coming to Terms with Web 2.0 in our daily living. Coming to terms means there got to be something you don't like. But no way, we cannot live without it, or we cannot live without seeing it, it's impossible. So we need to negotiate with ourselves, okay, let's, let's just take it easy. We cannot eliminate that, let's take it easy, all right? And so, let's try to take it easy by understand some of the phenomenon that's happening around us in today's world. All right, are you ready to exercise your power observations? Now keep that in mind. You have to learn how to understand something and come up with possible questions. Now let me tell you what to do. At the end of watching anything, because you have the mobile devices here, you can get ready by coming to this public online discussion forum with your mobile devices and get ready to use this forum to join down your thinking. Okay? Be it in the process of watching something or be it after that. You are highly encouraged to use the mobile devices, iPad or tablet, to come online to every week's public online discussion forum, to type up your thinking about what you are seeing in class when we come to the topic we're going to discuss. And the way to do it is very simple. You just click on this link, okay? When you get brought to this page, and then you just add a discussion topic, of course, in order to distinguish who you are, you can put your name first, and then concerning the piece you're watching, you get my questions on a specific topic, all right? So you just type up what you believe are important for you. Questions are as well. I need to encourage you to ask questions, all right? Chinese saying of knowledge is hot money, means learning how to ask questions, not hot that not to provide solutions, all right? Ask questions. Okay, let's go back to where we are. The first lessons you're going to learn in this week on coming to terms with the Web 2.0 era, you know, they were living, it's this.
，變著千變萬化，係咪防不勝防呢？係上個星期咧，我哋辦公室嘅電話係咁響，一拎起電話咧就會聽到一段電話錄音。你好，一早喺聯邦快遞通知，你有一封重要快件想你領取，如需查詢請按你。如果按指示撳名字嘅話咧，對方就會有人接聽㗎啦，話你嘅包裹出咗問題。係因為詐騙電話可能你都曾經收過，香港有人就因為一個電話唔見咗，快發埋。到底對方係邊個咧？佢講嘅名、地址係真定係假咧？呢一集我哋用線圖保持通話，繼續追查落去。七月，警方已經接到超過七百宗報案，接獲咗前六個月嘅總和，當中有二百六十幾宗騙徒得手，呃咗高達八千五百萬。好多人都收貨啊，順豐啊咩誒，啲雀龍都啊而家。我哋唔收貨，都係聯邦快遞打嚟嘅。上個星期一，我哋亦都收到自稱聯邦快遞嘅電話錄音。你有一封重要快件想你領取，如需查詢，請按你。電話接駁到去一位女士嗰度。電話快遞你好，請問有咩可以幫到你？我哋話自己叫做黃莉，對方就係查件，然後話我哋由珠海市景山路寄出嘅郵件喺通關嗰陣俾人扣查，發現裏邊藏咗三十二張銀聯卡，我哋否認曾經寄過。我你哋因為近距離地新聞都有報道過，有個人就放得咧外接就去情況發生，即係我唔係你本人去寄嘅喎，咁我哋聯邦呢啲係試你派啲去到珠海市嗰啲公安局做一個報案處理。究竟所謂嘅寄件地址係咩地方咧？呢、這個地址有間銀行，旁邊咧就係住宅大廈。我哋去珠海市聯邦快遞，根據寄件日期、寄件人嘅名、地址揾過。當地嘅職員話冇呢個記錄。這個電話應該是不是我們那個聯邦的電話由假冒中介公司嘅職員轉過到聲稱係珠海市公安局，對方話自己叫做牛警官，話要喺電話幫黃利錄口供，問咗佢嘅地址、工作機構、人工、有幾多個户口、提款方法、每日嘅提款上限等等。佢連身高、體重、頭髮長短、面部特徵都問埋。之後嘅電話出現另一個人同牛警官對話。嗰個人自稱係偵查大隊嘅李輝隊長，佢話會調查我哋係咪涉案，不過要先交兩萬蚊保證金需要睇到證據之後再回錢，對方就約我哋第二日朝早再通電話。我哋去到珠海香洲分局，揾電話裏面嘅牛正軍同李輝，偵查大隊係真嘅，不過就冇牛正軍。冇呢個人。牛正軍冇。一般我哋唔會話講俾你知，我哋邊度咁嘅，我哋都驚你投訴嘅。佢話呢個係佢警告話。嗯。我哋珠海係零八嘅。即係唔係零七嘅？有成日有嘅，我哋大陸好高嘅。咩乜藉口都有，我都接過啊，我都接過係電話打過嚟嘅
，佢話係法院嘅，話人哋告咗我，同埋兩個公仆，佢急先啦。第二日朝早，我哋將手機接駁到改頭電話，對方準時打嚟，叫我哋將電腦防毒軟件解除，之後再登入一個網站。我哋按指示输入编号同密码，随即就出现黄利嘅资料同案证，还涉案嘅不法金额达到二百八十四万。我哋话要亲自去珠海。佢要求我哋当日将二万蚊保证金存到工商银行北京一间分行国家金融局霍建能嘅户口。仲指定喺酒店店嗰度匯錢，唔可以去銀行。咁究竟有冇國家金融局嘅咧？有北京市金融工作局、國家財政局，但係就冇國家金融局，亦都揾唔到一個叫做霍建能嘅官員。匯款嘅期限到啦，對方再打俾我哋。我哋按住來電顯示逐個逐個打，大部分都係打唔通或者冇人聽。我哋查過假冒嘅人民檢察院網站、網絡地址喺新加坡，登記匯名嘅公司資料部分係亂咁打嘅，公司名稱仲同時登記咗二百幾個匯名。警方話，好多時候線索都會追查到境外。我哋亦都曾經都追過好多有線電視武器咧，走向喺比加嘅地方啊，或者東南亞嘅地方啊，都有嘅。咁啊，另外嗰啲帳户嚟講，我哋就睇到啦，好多帳户都係身處喺境外嘅。所以變相其實我哋都好依賴我哋同其他嘅內其他嘅執法機構啦嘅合作咯。呢一間喺上海嘅餐廳係由香港人 Ellie 管理，佢亦都係藝人李若彤嘅經理人。自問對錢銀都算精明，不過一年前。一個電話 ，Ellie 就令李若彤唔見咗一百萬。當時係朝早嘅八點幾，有人假冒北京朝陽區公安局嘅電話號碼打俾佢，話佢涉嫌唔使黑錢、開賭博網站等等，仲叫佢登入一個官方網站，上面除咗佢嘅身份證號碼等個人資料，仲有佢回鄉政府相。Ellie 更加感覺到俾對方一直監視緊。我係一路著住佢睡衣嘅，好坦白講，佢突然間同我講話，你著翻件衫莊重啲同我講嘢，我好驚啊！即刻起雞皮。咦？如果我屋企攝像，即係佢入侵咗我，同埋我開住個電腦有攝像啊嘛，即係我會唔會入咗我電腦睇到我咧？跟住我嚇到咧，我即刻著衫。佢仲講得出我每一日去邊間銀行出入。騙徒仲知道佢第二日會去北京，聲稱佢到埗嘅時候就會被捕。一年好驚，於是就按騙徒嘅指示，用公司嘅電腦做咗一啲步驟，就將用嚟確認交易嘅 USB 手指插入電腦，撳咗個 OK 掣。佢話：你你你撳一撳個 OK 掣得㗎啦，咁樣我係撳過嘅，但係我真係冇入過銀碼。佢突然間個電腦成個黑曬，咁跟住佢就話：啊，電腦而家黑咗，你唔使驚㗎。我哋而家喺度操作緊 ，OK。咁但係咧，誒、呃、呢、這個時候咧，你千祈唔好睇手機，喺呢個時候。手機突然間響，因為銀行咧係會有錢出同有錢入去 send message 俾你。喺呢個時候，我見到一百萬就冇咗。啲錢係屬於藝人李若彤噶，一嚟即刻報案，公安懷疑佢嘅電腦同手提電話被入侵，對方控制咗佢嘅電腦做網上轉賬，亦都收集咗佢個人資料。啊！呢嚿錢咧，公安已經其實好坦白，我覺得係追唔翻嘅。咁我又話俾我聽咧，呢啲户口咧叫太空户口，點樣咧？佢哋通常咧就用招聘，誒、欸，我哋今日招聘你哋幾點嚟呢度啦？咁用佢哋嘅身份證。如果你有開咗個户口而能夠即日開埋個 USB 咧，就有一百蚊人工。
佢哋可以一日之內揾到一百個人開白卡嘅，所以我嚿錢喺五分鐘之內已經走曬啦。呢、这個假冒最高人民檢察院嘅網站，網址同真人唔同，不過版面亦幾乎一模一樣，只係其中一頁唔同咗，可以俾人輸入銀行户口號碼、密碼等等嘅資料。呢、这個連結正即係下載網絡安全軟件，係咪真嘅呢？原來下載嘅係遙距控制電腦嘅軟件，令你嘅電腦俾人全盤操控。手機安全監控軟件又係咪安全呢？網絡保安專家楊和真用五十幾個防毒軟件掃描過，只係得五個認到佢其實係病毒。單安裝安裝完咁，你啟動啦，啟動咗之後咧，黑客可以攞完軟件控制你部手機嘅。咁基本上咧，佢可以喺部手機度讀取任何資料都得嘅，可能黐埋你個聯絡人啦，黐埋個電話號碼咧，再去呃其他人咧，或者呃你啲朋友咧，亦都可以嘅。除咗套取通讯录嘅资料，黑客仲可以做啲乜咧？我哋下一节再睇。攞走咗一两张文件咧，一张系假冒上一次人民检察院嘅拘捕令，另一张咧就系假嘅资产冻结令。我提供呢两份文件俾我哋嘅观众话。佢收到假冒公安嘅電話之後咧，即係提供過回鄉證號碼俾佢，但係之後佢收到嘅電郵有埋自己嘅相啦、身份證號碼、仲有出生日期等等。啊，電郵密碼、信用卡號碼呢啲咧，我哋經常都會用到。原來邊個要攞到呢啲資料，比我哋想象中容易好多。同小食市一樣，呢間餐廳提供免費 WiFi 俾顧客上網。網絡保安專家楊和生就喺二樓做緊啲咩咧？好多其他人咧都跟入咗噶啦，咁咧我做法咧就係咧截取曬所有佢哋嘅通訊咧，就係逼佢哋嘅通訊咧嚟咗我哋部機先。咁我咁我部機咧拆解咗之後咧，再由我部機咧播翻出去互聯網出邊個世界上面嘅。連接同一個 WiFi， 由我真已經見到樓下部分電腦上緊咩網。我哋用呢一部電話連接咗同一個 WiFi 登入電郵。佢揾到電郵嘅登入 ID 同密碼。我點解要截取到咧？其中個先決條件都係個受害者啦，變咗係佢見到個警號之後咧，佢唔理個警號，繼續揀咧，繼續進行咁嘅動作。但係冇問咧 ，yes man 嚟嘅咧，因為我哋嘅認知係咧，依嚿嘢阻住我哋進行做嘢噶嘛。好多人咧都唔好細心睇嗰個警號係啲咩嚟嘅。網絡世界儲存咗好多機密資料，黑客無處不在，手法亦都千變萬化。最近有黑客公布一項新嘅技術，透過多媒體信息 MMS 入侵，用隻手提電話預設咗自動接收，黑客只要發放植入咗無碼程式嘅 MMS， 就可以同時入侵大量電話。電話中咗就會點嘅咧？楊岸生喺呢一部手提電話裝咗一個黑客程式。咁我 app 咧喺個手機度運行嘅時候咧，呢部手機就會主動咧聯絡黑客部機嘅。咁黑客一見到呢部機走嚟主動聯絡我嘅時候咧，咁我知道就係話，嗯，有人做咗計啦咁樣樣。咁咧我就可以遙遠咧控制佢嘅啦。啊，你琴晚睇下呢個 contact list 喺唔喺度咯？電話本身儲存咗三個聯絡人，楊和生全部都見到。呢一啲係手機收過嘅短信。連手機舊主人刪除咗嘅相都揾到，除咗截取記錄，楊岸生仲可以知道手機主人而家望住啲咩嘢。咁唔知大家有冇見到佢著個相機啦？咁理論上就應該冇見嘅，不過而家個相片咧，其實咧就已經顯示咗喺個黑黑嘅電腦上面。楊岸生話：裝咗防毒軟件都唔能夠百分百擋住呢啲黑客軟件。打開一封有毒嘅電郵，下載一個 Apps 都可能會中招。佢運作原理好簡單嘅啫，我哋可以咧連接上包任何嘢都，譬如中意玩誒某啲類型嘅遊戲，我可以包裝喺個遊戲上面都可以。如果你中意用某一類嘅實用工具，我亦都可以包喺實用工具。技術水平一般使用者嚟講係誒十分零到三分嘅啫，咁黑客都要有九分嘅咁樣。
，識得自己砌電腦嘅 Jackie 對電腦都算係在行。以前電腦中咗毒，佢都覺得唔難應付。直至舊年七月，佢發現屋企嘅電腦可能被入侵。佢經常使用嘅網上付款户口 PayPal 突然多咗筆轉賬，筆錢轉咗做波蘭錢，過咗户俾一個喺東歐佢唔識嘅人，但佢就冇好似平時咁收到通知電郵。佢向 PayPal 投訴，最終筆錢攞得翻，不過 PayPal 嘅回覆就令佢有啲驚訝。根據我哋嘅記錄咧，個 IP address 咧係你府上嗰個 IP address 嚟嘅喎，咁呢樣嘢更加令到我覺得恐懼啦，代表咗啲咩咧？嗰、那個 hacker 根本就可能就係入侵咗我部電腦，控制我部電腦做所謂嘢。事後佢重新設定路由器，換咗防毒軟件，改曬所有嘅密碼。不過冇幾耐，佢再發現 PayPal 多咗一筆可疑轉賬。佢即時用電話上網查下電郵有冇轉賬通知。咁我就 check 到個 email。係有一秒係 pop up 咗，有一個 transaction 即係轉錢走嘅嘅 email， 但係一秒之後就消失咗。咁我嗰一下真係望住咧，我係好誇疑嘅，嚇點解會咁嘅咧？我即時聯想到就係、是，咁因為我屋企自己用嘅電腦咧，我又有個少少嘅壞習慣，我唔會好經常去登出所有嘢，但可能正正因為咁，咁、那個黑客咧。當控制咗我部電電腦之後咧，佢就可以連我嘅密碼都唔需要知道，就可以喺遠端地去控制所有嘢。Jackie 嘅電腦有時候屋企人會上下內地嘅網站煲劇，佢懷疑係因為咁向黑客打開咗道門。網絡專家楊和真話：呢啲網絡過片程式有破綻，黑客可以將木馬病毒寫入去片段。喺網站睇片可能會中招，譬如有啲片咧係一啲正常廠家誒提供俾你嘅，佢哋都會夾個病毒喺度啦。但係如果有時睇啲可能翻版啊、盜版嘅片咧，咁盜版人點揾錢？可能呢個就係其中一個揾錢方法咯。網絡滲透無遠不屆，黑客亦都無處不在。舊年本港接獲六千七百宗網絡騙案，損失嘅金額超過十二億港元。做過保安局局長嘅立法會議員葉劉淑儀亦都中過招，有黑客假扮佢寄電郵俾瑞士私人銀行，吩咐要將五十萬港紙過渡去一個海外户口。點解佢會為黑客開咗個門嘅咧？原來係因為一封假扮港籍主席前果峰寄嚟嘅電郵。佢就係話誒 ，Regina，I need help urgent。如果你打開一個附件啦，咁咁我以為朋友揾個幫我即刻打開個附件，我諗佢仲會照。近幾年嚟，網上流傳好多前果封名義嘅假電郵。舊年本港嘅電郵騙案超過一千二百宗，涉及嘅金額係網絡騙案當中最高，損失咗近十億港元。好多年之前咧，冇咁多保安嘅考慮嘅，咁所以咧，今時今日嘅電郵咧，仲係用緊咧係第一篇咧。嗰、那個嘅技術同埋嗰啲嘅數字去認證嘅，其實一個電郵任何每個部分咧都可以咧係更改嘅，係寄件者咧嘅名稱咧係打乜都得。中小企老闆 Anita 每日嘅例行公事就係刪除呢啲垃圾電郵。好多係誒話誒你個英文仲未塞到喎咁樣，咁都幾多啊近來？差唔多一日都有一個或者兩個咁樣嘅 email。啊！琴日我又收到有一個係誒我哋其中一個人嘅名嘅，但係 from 嗰個地方或者個 email 度名咧係我哋從來都未聽過。第一時間就會將佢撇咗佢個 spam mail 嗰度。點解要咁小心咧？前年佢一個喺外國嘅客突然問佢點解改咗入數户口都唔早啲通知佢，佢先知道有人扮佢寄電郵俾客，叫客人過户到另一個海外户口。Annie 就開始發現黑客嘅蹤跡。我哋都諗唔到咁犀利啊！佢扮我哋講嘅嘢，都有扮對方誒、呃、改咗佢哋嘅 email 嘅誒 domain， 因為通常呢啲 email 都牽涉有好幾個人喺裏面，咁我哋都唔會逐個 email 去 check 個 email address 改咗。誒呢場事後即時改曬公司所有電郵嘅密碼，不過冇幾耐，黑客又再出現。佢喺美國嘅熟客係一間細公司，過咗幾萬蚊俾個黑客
，當發現係騙案報警嗰陣，嗰、那個户口已經取消咗。事後 ，Anita 照樣寄貨俾人，算係分擔損失。公司之後三次發現黑客，佢決定報警。其實警察都同我講，我哋幫唔到你嘅喎，因為呢啲係跨境嘅事情，我哋唯有自己小心咯，因為真係冇人幫到我哋嘅。當我哋要收錢嘅時候。小心啲，再同個客求生多一次，一定係回翻嚟呢個户口，唔好回去第二度，即係自己行多步。公司人人都用電腦，亦都可能係有人唔小心，令公司系統被黑客多次入侵。員工 Anna 同假冒嘅客人通過電郵，佢話而家上網會小心好多。以前即係我都有上 QQ 啊嗰啲。你即係有時有啲八卦新聞啊，咁樣即時彈出嚟嗰啲，我會追入去睇下咩事啊咁樣。咁但係而家我會留意啦，都係冇睇。第一封 email， 跟住咧就 attach 一個 word 嘅 file， 即係一句嘢就係話我已經做咗 payment 啦。我就會知道呢啲係假㗎啦。每次雞同雞，你要諗下已經無無端端點解要夠錢啲喎？你要俾我咁樣。面對千變萬化嘅變著，無處不在嘅黑客，一般人除咗話小心啲。譬如唔好用公眾電腦同 WiFi 輸入個人資料同密碼之外，大型嘅金融機構又咪需要為大家轉賬接多啲嘅保安認證咧？今日嘅時間差唔多，我哋下星期同一時間見。OK， I've just given you some real life story which can happen just right in our first living. Alright， so what are you going to do? Allow me to give you two important homework. The first, it's after you watch this particular documentary, think about some questions which is very much related to your daily living and share your questions right here in this particular public forum, okay? This is very important. Each one of you, when you will, you're willing to share, you could add to our understanding of a different perspective, all right? It could be a story you experience. It could be something that leads us to think about this further. Observation means get out something directly from your personal experience. Either you read it from somewhere or you experience it yourself. All right? Think about questions. One or two will be good enough. And the second thing you need to do, if you have not done this, is to say hello to the whole class in the social forum here. So far, we got five students who did it. All right? Um, I expect more students who are willing to share with the whole class who you are, where you're from, your major, your faculty, your residential college, your something you want to share. Okay, so we could have a very interesting record of our students' interaction. Lastly, we're getting into the second week of the semester and you will see a lot of different things from this website. Now, at the end of the first week, I invite you to complete this first week with class questionnaire before the end of this Saturday, okay? So I can share with you the data collected next week. So to do that, what you need to do is to click into this link, okay? And you will brought to a questionnaire like this, and then you can fill out the questionnaire and then submit it, all right? It's a very simple questionnaire. In this class, you have a chance to feed back your ideas to the whole class and to me so that we can move together. As I said, you are the owner of this class and I'm here to help you to learn the transitions of being a taught to learn student to a learn to learn student. And remember, complete this questionnaire, first with a class questionnaire, before 11.30 this Saturday, okay? So lastly, I need to take attendance for today, and then I'll let you go, all right? So I hope you enjoy today's class. Candy is still not here today. Uh, Wang Chun, thank you. Uh, Annie, thank you. Uh, Shu, Shu, are you here? Z, Shu, are you here? Thank you. Right, so you can see your name here, Juliana. Juliana, okay, not here today. Tom, thank you. Connie, thank you. Max, thank you. Um, Jerry, thank you.
Tammy, thank you. Joanna, thank you. Uh, and then Peter, thank you. Romina, Romina, thank you. Sheena, thank you. All right, so uh, T O, thank you. Uh, Vincent, Vincent, you're not here today, okay? So and then Kai Wood, thank you. I need to learn how to pronounce your name. Thank you. Uh, Alex, thank you. All right, so up the Eason. Okay, thank you very much. We got 19 students, actually 18 students. All right, so see you again next Monday. Not here. E3. Copy it down. E3 1032. I will send out another message to make sure you will not miss it. E3. This is E4, but you have to go to E3, first four, 1032. It's the interactive learning space, okay? See you next Monday there, 11.30 to 12.45. Okay, thank you very much for coming to class today. I'm going to stop the video. Oh yes, uh, if you want to review what we have gone through in the first class, what you need to do is come down here, and click on this link on YouTube, and you can watch the video. It's an hour, 14 minutes, and 21 seconds. Okay? All right, you got it. So, it's very convenient. All right, see you back here next Monday. So that's it for today's CISQ 114, Section 1, Red Technology and Light on January 14, 2016.